Hello, welcome to part two of our little island tutorial set here. Uh, hopefully it'll only be two parts, maybe three. We'll see how far we get this time. But Okay, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, we got our water, our island, and our palm tree trunk set up. Now we need to go in and, and start filling in the extra details, like the sand on the on the island, maybe a few grass stalks, and then the leaves on the palm tree, obviously, and, of course, the texture maps for everything else. Now, uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and create the leaves for the palm tree. Now, uh, before I get into modeling them, what I want to do is find a good texture map, a good photograph of a, of a palm tree leaf that I can cut up and gimp and then use as an alpha map, use with an alpha map to put the leaves on the tree. Saves a lot of, uh, of your, your computer's resources if you just use photographs instead of trying to model out each leaf. So, one website we can go to is called cgtextures.com. It's all royalty free photographs. You just go in and find what you need, download it for free, and don't have to, you know, don't have to tell anyone or ask anyone permission. So anyway, cgtextures.com. Now I'm going to go over here to nature. Where is it at? There it is. Come down here to tropical and use tropical leaves. And I've played with this site before, obviously. So the, I know that the leaf that I was looking for, at least it used to be on the very last page. So let's go to page nine. Yes, there it is, the very bottom. So I'll just click on there and it brings up a few options. You can get a small one, 1024 by 295, which is, you know, pretty pretty good size. And then you can have a really big one if you're going to do it like a, I don't know, a high quality print, you know, if you're creating some graphic design stuff. So anyways, the small one's going to be perfectly big enough for us. So click on that. Brings up the options. What do you want to do? I want to open it in GIMP 2.6. Okay. And it downloads it. Okay, go ahead and clear that out, and let me open it up in GIMP over here. Bring all my tools together. Excuse me. Okay, so now in GIMP, uh, I want to cut it out to where the background is transparent and the leaf itself is the only thing that we can see. So I'm going to grab my Path Select tool here, and let's kind of move it out of the way over here so I can see the whole leaf here. Same thing with the layers over here, about like so. Okay, now I'm just going to click in here. And it doesn't have to be precise because, as you know, the leaf kind of is a small part of the scene. So if we were zoomed in on this, you might want to get a little bit more precise on the edge. But uh, I think we can get away with kind of just a real basic outline here. So we're just going to outline it here with the... Pen tool thingy. And this is the same thing. If you wanted to use the fern type leaves instead, uh, I'm just using this banana tree leaf because it's a lot quicker to outline and cut out than the than the others. So if you want to use the fern tree, you do the exact same technique as I'm using here. Just cut it out instead. So now I've got it pretty well lined out. Now I'm going to go select from path right there and it selects everything there and we're going to go control C, control V and did it work? No. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. I'm not real familiar with GIMP. I'm mostly a Photoshop guy. So tell you what, let's go. Do we have the selection still select from path? There we go. Select edit Let's try copy visible, and then we'll create a new layer. Brings it way up over there. Okay, and we'll paste. Hmm. I tell you what we can do. I know this will work. Let's get rid of those new layers we created. Actually, create one more new layer. I have two screens, so every time I click new layer, it pops this dialog up over on the other screen. Okay, transparency, good. Now let's grab that guy, move him up above the other one. And now I'm going to go select from path and then select invert. There we go. And I'll hit delete and it deletes the, the background. Now select invert again. Grab my move tool. Okay. Select. 
copy. <laughs> Let me pause recording. I'm making a fool of myself. Let me pause recorder and figure this dang thing out. Okay, be right back. Okay, now, uh, like I said, I'm a Photoshop guy. This has some different options than Photoshop has. So, uh, we have our selected, our cutout layer here. So, we'll use our magic wand here to select that white. Select the invert. And now we're going to go edit, copy, edit, paste as new layer. There we go. Photoshop automatically pastes a new layer when you copy and paste. So, anyways, so we'll turn that layer off. And let's go ahead and select none. Grab our move tool. Kind of move this guy to the center here. Let's uh, set the stem all the way into the edge there. Maybe even further. So about like that. And now, let me get the crop tool. Where is it at here in GIMP? Scale, shear, perspective. Edit, image, crop. <laughs> again, let me pause. Okay, again, Photoshop's not translating. You see a little razor blade guy right there. Okay. So now just click and drag over here and go ahead and enter, and it crops it. Okay, now then, <laughs> we're getting somewhere. File, save as. Brings this up, and I'm going into my G Drive Blender files, and I've got a test folder in here. I'm saving this into. Okay. And we'll call this, it's got to be a PNG. There we go. And let's just call this palm leaf, palm underscore leaf. Okay, save, brings up this dialog, merge visible layers, export, and then it brings up this dialog, save background color, turn that off, save, and done. Okay, now, okay, let's minimize all this stuff. Okay, now, what I want to do, let's go to our top view, and tell you what, the ocean with the high res, if we look into the wireframe view, you can see it has quite a few polygons in here, so let's go ahead and turn that off for now. Just turn the visible part off. It should still render when we go to render it. So let's shift A, add a plane. Zoom in here. And let's tab into edit mode. Let's scale it. See our palm tree leaf was horizontal, so let's put the plane here to where its median point is about where the stem of the turn this guy off. Where the stem of the leaf texture map will be. Let's make it about like so. And then tell you what, let's add a couple of loops on here. Go to our front view and let's give it a little bit of curve. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and give that a tab out of edit mode. There we go. Smooth shading. Alright. Looks decent. Let's add one more loop right here. Actually, I tell you what, let's select everything, W, subdivide smooth. There we go. So it's got a little, a few more polygons than I think I used in my original, but uh, no big deal. Okay, now we need to split our window up again. Go to, uh, over here, UV image editor. And let's tab in, oh, grab the right plane there. Tab into edit mode, select everything, U, unwrap. Okay, puts it down here. And now let's open image, open image, the palm leaf that we just made, do, do, do. there we are, open it up, and then let's do unwrap again, and let's scale that on the x-axis to where it fits the leaf there. Okay, so now if we look through this at the texture, you can see our palm tree leaf. Now it's not showing up on the bottom, but it it, it should render just fine. So, okay, so now we got that mapped on there. Let's create a texture map for that. Let's go to our material settings and say new. Call this palm leaf. Okay, and go to our textures, new, and we're going to say image or movie, and Click on the little thumbnail there, say palm leaf, since it's already loaded into our scene. 
and turn on pre-multiply. There we go. Go ahead and collapse that. Image, um, image mapping. It's good. Uh, mapping coordinates are going to be UV. And let's turn on both here for the preview. And I like to use the little monkey head. It gives a little bit better representation of where it's going to be. Come down to collapse that. Go down to alpha as well. Color and alpha. And you know what? Let's give it a little geometry as well. Just a little bit. Not too much. About 0.25 probably be fine. Okay, back to our material settings. We can see a bit of that blackness on the edge of the, of the little monkey's ear. And that's where it's not transparent. And it needs to be. So go ahead and turn on transparency right there. Set the alpha all the way down to zero. And since we said this leaf needs to be the color and the alpha map, it's acting as both and is letting our blackness, or what you would see as black in here, which is actually transparent, is showing it as transparent. So, one more thing we need to do for this material, come down here to Shadow and turn on Receive Transparent. There we go. So, the more of these leaves that we have, when they fall on top of each other, it will show a, a shadow of the leaf shape rather than the plane shape. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and call this palm leaf. There we go. And let's go ahead and go back into solid view. Okay, now is the magical part where we add these leaves to our tree. Now you could go in there manually and, and grab it and duplicate it and move it around how you want. But there is an easier way. We're going to go to our particle mode. Hit the little plus sign. Call this palm leaves. Palm leaf. I guess you could say leaves. There we go and come down to there, go to hair, and set it to advanced, and we don't want a thousand because that would be an awful lot of leaves. Let's just say for this part, let's just say 20. And now we need to go all the way down to the bottom, the vertex groups, and on density, go to that very first, vert first thing we did when we created our palm tree trunk there, created that vertex group of leaves. And that's where it's going to put all of our leaves. So now, under render, we don't want to do the path, which would be more like hair or, or grass. We want to say object. And the object we want to use is the palm leaf. There we go. And now if we go to up here to physics, the size is 0 0.05. We want it to be 1, which is really big. So let's set it to 0 0.5. And I just play with this the size here until we get it about where we want. That's probably maybe a little bit bigger, 0.25 be fine and then we can have up here under velocity we can set some randomness to have some of those leaves be a little bit smaller than the others okay now this is where it kind of gets confusing not confusing but kind of tedious because you have to kind of play with it until you get all those leaves kind of pointing the right direction and it well sometimes it's a little faster than others but uh, A lot of trial and error in this area. Okay, and at this point, maybe 20 leaves is a little too many. So let's put that down to, let's try 8, just for now. So we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. And you know what? Let's, let's go back to our vertex mode and we're going to select all these see right now the what it what it's doing is it's surrounding these vertices with uh with our with our uh, our particle emit emission and it's putting the particles on this one and then it's also surrounding this one so it's putting a few down here as well i would like it to keep it at the very tip of the of the trunk here so tell you what let's grab this loop here and remove that from that vertex group and we tab back out go back to our particle settings and just change any of the th settings and it'll pop it back there to the very tip of the trunk. So, set a random a little bit more. You rotate some more. And just play with the emitter object settings here and you can get some pretty decent looking leaves coming out there. 
Maybe only. Okay. Change the velocity randomness down a little bit lower and change some of the randomness of the rotation. And maybe we can put a few more leaves on there now. Okay, so now, actually, let's make those a little bit bigger. They look kind of small now. Where was it at? Velocity here. Physics. There we go. A little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so now if we were to render, before we do that, let's set up some lighting, good lighting in our scene. Let's move this default lamp up here and turn it to a sunlight. There we go. And let's grab our world settings here and give us some ambient occlusion of about 0.35. And now let's let's see what this looks like. Just a quick render. Okay, so those palm tree leaves are believable for the most part. The ambient occlusion is uh, giving some graininess to the underside and excuse me, the non-brightened parts from the, the original lamp. So let's set the ambient occlusion ray trace to have 10 samples instead of just 5. Okay, and let's also grab our original palm leaf. This is the one that has all the palm leaf settings on it. So if you grab the trunk and try to edit the, the leaves, it's not going to work because it doesn't have it. So we'll go here. Let's make it a little less shiny. Bring the intensity way down, hardness down as well. And make sure image sampling or pre-multiply it is. Okay. Okay, let's try rendering one more time. And since we gave that ray tracing a little bit higher settings, it takes a little bit longer to render. So it's looking a little bit better. And again, I'm running pretty pretty long on my time here. So I'll tell you what, I guess that gimp gimping <laughs> took us took too much time. So let's go ahead and save this as part two, and uh, and I'll go ahead and do a part three. So I'll see you in part three, and hopefully that'll wrap things up.